Hi guys, welcome to Systematic Chess Club. And we are having today, we are going to cover the games of uh, FIDE Women Grand Prix. And we have a winner here of 2022 Astana Women's Grand Prix have been won by Katriana Lagno. She is the winner and she has remained unbeaten and she secured 7.5 points and today it was a very long and tense final round and Katrina Lagno playing under the FIDE flag emerged as the winner of the Astana leg of the 2022-2023 Women's Grand Prix. 1000 uh, euros first prize in addition to 160 W is we are going to review her games that she won and how she has played so let me switch to the uh it is the 12 player round robin tournament runs from september 18 to 29 and today it is over and we have got a winner and what we are going to do we are going to analyze uh, all the games uh, that have been played by our champion lagno katrena so we will start from the round one and also we will go on uh, very all the matches that are being played so let us start fine so let me put it on the board so we are right now going to the round one and in round one lagno Katrin, Lagno Katrina is federated 2547 during this match and now right so let us see e4 has, this is being played and the Sicilian that has been def, uh, opted so from the beginner's perspective it is very important that you should know that e4 and c5 is Sicilian defense So I need to just check everything is alright. I think everything is alright and so it is a classical series of the games and E4, C5 has been played and it is a Sicilian defense. And now we have to check whether I need the link. So now uh, if someone plays e4 so this is the champion the perhaps currently best in the world opponent plays c5 this opening is called Sicilian defense and then immediately Lagno went for knight to f3 and in this situation the best reply is knight c6 that is one option and that is what Vaisali opted for and it is usually the Sicilian old defense so in the first match that Katrina played against Grandmaster Vaishali that we are reviewing right now and it is a Sicilian defense old defense so let us see how it goes I think I need to keep the board a bit big and the names are perhaps are okay and now what happened is that uh, after this move uh, she went for knight c3 developing the minor pieces so we need to develop the minor pieces that we are learning from these games and then immediately where Sally went for g6 uh, this is the right move in the Sicilian defense and now d4 has been played so immediately she has played d4 and now there are many choices that can be done uh, c can capture it c can capture the d4 square and vesali goes for that and now knight captures on d4 so here you cannot capture it because you are having a double 
control on that square and this is what you should be looking for if uh, you are playing you should be looking and so uh, now what happens so bishop g7 has been played and uh, now I'm getting let me reply it So now what to do? So she went for uh, what are the options that can be played here? Uh, there are many options that can be played, but theoretically it is better to put the bishop on e3, and that is what <coughs> Lagno does. She goes for bishop to e3, and now we have uh, knight f6, bishop e2. So this is the move that has been played and now Vaishali castles and sea castles also Grandmaster Lagno, Katrina also castles. So this is a game of the first round that we are watching of the champion, the current champion that we have seen. Oh thank you Ars uh, for being here and watching it. And now d5 has been played and exchange happens knight captures d5 knight captures d5 and now here vesali has captured this knight first and now he captures and he captures this he goes there you have to now exchange the queen there is no other way because otherwise you may uh, if you capture this the queen is hanging here and in this defense this happens it is a normal variation that happens now bishop to f3 so this is looking that you have to rest here or move here or you have to move this pawn you cannot move that pawn so this move is quite good move and now bishop to e6 develops and Lagno wants to first get exchange of the bishops. He captures, she captures, and she captures it back. And now it is almost appearing to be equal game. And Grandmaster Vesali has been very sound uh, in the recent past, and she has played extremely brilliant against the champion, doubling the rook on the open file. She captures, she captures, and rook comes to c8 and c3, defending the pawn rook c7 f4 and so this move is making some space for the end game the king should march towards the center that is the idea and that is what grandmaster katriana lagno is looking for e6 questioning the rook rook now king goes to f2 so it appears that it is completely a balanced game they will end up in a draw and yes this game end up in a draw and now they, there are three pawns against two pawns here Vesali is again at advantage and Lagno is playing quite well she wants to defend these pawns okay hello Nikahat thank you so much now g5 uh, rook goes to d6 check king takes the central position and now check again kings goes back check and there is a threefold of repetition and here the game goes we will try to analyze this uh, let me put it in my study i will clone it you can clone it on leeches and then you can analyze the game and now I am going for happen and how many errors have happened actually I hope the entire board is visible is it 
So I am trying to analyze it and we can see that analysis very soon. Give me some time I need to set it. So doing it live is a bit difficult. Actually we need to see the entire board and that's why I have to set it. So whenever we watch a match of a grandmaster or of a great player, what our intent is to look at how he has handled that. now it is there board here and I will be doing the analysis part so that we can learn from this game and I am now requesting the so the computer is doing the analysis Correct. So it is taking some time. Whenever it analyzes, it takes some time. we will uh, wait for it analysis and till then we can uh, move to the next match so let us see the next match the of the so i will go to the broadcast section and then so many games are going on but we are watching and now the first match between Vaisali and the champion is a draw now we are going to watch the second match and the second match in the round two uh, C played against Alexandria Goria Kichinev so that is a very strong grandmaster and let us see see what see the second contender of the tournament and now we are going to see alexandra is playing with uh, white pieces and now lagno is playing with the black pieces e4 c5 again we see sicilian defense so in the last match she was playing uh, against sicilian and now she herself is playing sicilian defense Knight f3, e6. 
so this is a french variation of the sicilian defense and there are one move that you can play this you can play this there are other moves also that can be played but here we are able to see the french variation that lagno katrina has adopted to play now i think there is slight setting problem so let us see let us analyze it now c play c3 knight f6 right move i think i know this line uh, this is alapin variation attack this pawn and this knight cannot come here this knight cannot come here so you have to play e5 and that is the only way how you can get a tempo and put this knight on some other square yes he has played e5 knight d5 so here the knight comes here and probably it is looking towards this square immediately uh, alexandra try to control the center with d4 now if she does not captures it will be holding there here she has opted for capture and c captures it back d6 bishop c4 bishop e7 castles castles so right now on the board it is completely theoretical moves that we are watching this is how uh, the grandmaster at 2500 rated players like alexandra and katrina play and this is very important for us to understand these ideas from beginner's perspective that how this is going to be useful so now if we see the board uh, the development is still there to be done and how that development is to be done is important so we are here d4 e4 c5 knight f3 e6 uh, all alapin variation of the sicilian this move the moment you play this this is french variation in french defense usually the idea is first you play e6 and then you play d5 so this is if you after c5 if e6 is played then it is french the variation of that c3 and then knight f6 e5 knight d5 that is the only, that is one way how you can push this knight over here and then here it goes so now e, c captures d4 c captures d4 d6 so this is the move in the delayed alapin variation and now bishop comes to c4 this another move here yes that is the bishop to c4 and now bishop e7 castles castles so now my question is if you see the board uh, who is better here can we find out that who uh, here it seems that this knight is centralized holding this on if you capture it you are holding that this square white is holding the center so queen e2 and now knight c6 developing the minor piece knight comes there and now lagno captures five knight c3 and capture and how you can have that so you have to go through some books there is one very good book that uh, uh, it seems that white is at advantage uh, exactly we can't say because white has two isolated pawns if you see on the board that these are two are safeguarding the king very well and has nowhere to go so from the bishop point of view white's bishop are very active very active on a very very active square 
but black this bishop is a problem in even sicilian as well even when you play slav defense or queen's gambit decline the problem exists and now lagno goes for queen to c7 bishop retreats because there uh, is a chance of discovery attack on a hanging piece attacking it twice and he looks to make the bishop alive on this diagonal very strong diagonal the long diagonal you have to look for rook e1 bishop b7 and so now knight g5 so is this a sacrifice is this a blunder can you see the motive here why alexandra played that knight over there can we captures what are you going to do might be check that can be evaluated but let us see captures 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 the central pawn and exchange of the queen happens so this is the captures you go for a check it retreats you can see what happens computer suggests this you so that's why bishop sacrifice over there is not okay but you can look for these ideas whenever but here let us see what c has played the grandmaster who have won the fide women grand prix today c is playing with the black pieces here c has put the knight for a sacrifice with the bishop and now the uh, c is having two more pieces alexandra but can katrina uh, lagno put something in it this is a round 2 match and now see here attacks forking the two and that was the idea behind katrina that she captured it the knight was played she captures now she captures this bishop she has gone for the capture 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 and this is the idea if rook captures it i will fork the pawn now looking for some discovery attack there is a likely chances of discovery attack and so here uh, the king is moved to the away by lagno the champion and now the game goes on and it ends up in a draw So the first two rounds has been drawn and she is still undefeated. She is still undefeated. That is the point. Now let us go to the third round. So nine rounds have been played, and we are going the third round. Are we going to see some victory? Because she is undefeated in the tournament. She has won the championship very convincingly, and two five one zero federated. and this match she has so this time this is a king's pawn game so from beginner's perspective we can see the first two matches are uh, perhaps the sicilian defense once she uh, played with the white pieces and vashali played uh, with the black pieces and she was playing quite well and drew it the second match she is playing she played with the black pieces and she opted for sicilian defense alapin variation and she unhesitantly got it drew so this is how she started in the tournament and now this is the match where she is federated 2547 playing against the federated polina suvalova she is international master and she has federating 2510 and this match is a queen's pawn game and and now knight f3 knight c6 Bishop b5. So, what is this opening? Do you know what is the name of this opening? If from beginner's perspective, if you are watching it, what is the name of this opening? What is this opening called? So, the moment the bishop goes to b5, this opening is called Rio Lupe's opening. And from beginner's perspective, you need to prepare these openings well. in order to lead you to better situation so in chess it is very important that every point you need to look 
uh, what are the options here uh, bishop may come over this square also and this is italian game if you put the bishop on b5 then it is called rio lupes so rio lupes that usually uh, uh, most of the players play and we need to play a particular opening for more number of times third move and that is called rio lupes opening if you're watching it you can understand it now it is either you take it or you go back i won't allow you to be on this b5 that is the at b5 square and which is actually dangerous because it is spinning the knight it has a threat of doubling the pawn and here likely chances you may capture or you may go if you capture it then it is called exchange variation uh, grandmaster lagno katrina the current champion of the fide women grand prix 2022 at astana go, you may go for the exchange also it has its own lines but you need to be prepared so now knight comes to f6 castles developing the bishop on e7 rook develops at e5 controlling the center because here there is a chance that this pawn is hanging but is it hanging actually what happens here if he, the suppose the bishop has been developed and this has not been captured why let us check that what happens if it captures so if it captures then computer says immediately go for this move and you have given the center but what are you going to do so the next best move here is in this suppose someone plays like uh, maybe something like this what are you going to do you put the rook over here this is coming and then you can capture it it has to go back so this is it has not been taken by Polina this was hanging it could have been taken and the computer is saying how much if you make this move you are getting plus point five bishop e7 now rook to e1 b5 attacking the bishop bishop goes back to b3 castles a4 so what's going to happen here a4 why in order to uproot it he cannot capture it because you are attacking it so rook moves there you capture this was the best move perhaps uh, making some space now attacking the center so b4 now knight goes to bd2 uh, b capture c3 b capture c3 perhaps it's a good move b6 knight f3 this is a tactical move this queen is here knight comes exchange happens check and so should have retreated or taken it and these two lines were supposed to be played but rook f8 I can't I'm not sure uh, why this is an inaccuracy but yes this line is there so that's good so here if you see we are having this position very strong by Grandmaster Katrina you cannot uproot that this bishop cannot come here and uproot it there is no pawn so this setting of the bishop with a pawn is very strong they both are interacting with each other they are safe now rook goes queen e3 c1 the queen of the board but perhaps better was rook c1 and that could have been better but c have gone for now here in this match i think this is the position where it has been double triple attack and now exchange have dangerous and uh, they are probably going to pass ahead that is the thing captures and now clearly it is the send all you need to get the rooks of the board and 
at this stage she resigned because these two connected pawns are very very dangerous very very dangerous so here we are having some problem in the analytic So the first two matches were Sicilian and the third match she went for real Lupage and she won it. So let us see the moves again. This third match how she has won it. So I think real Lupage's questions goes back. So this is the idea that we have to keep in mind that the bishop retreats. You can capture it also. That is exchange variation. If you capture it, if you capture this knight, it is exchange variation. Now here it is not clear why this has not been captured. I just want to see it. Captures, you go there, it comes, you come back, it goes there, you capture, it comes here, knight comes here, you go there. So I think there was no problem. Why at this stage this pawn was not captured by I.M. Suvalo Polina. If you have the answer, please write it down. Why this pawn has not been captured? I think it was to be captured. There is no fear in it. You should capture it. So, might be she was thinking that there is some trap. There might be some trap, but it's not very clear. I don't know that trap if it is. So I will be analyzing that position that why she did not capture it, whether she missed it deliberately because computer is giving when if you go for that capture at that move number. So at this stage, knight has come, castles. Computer is not saying it is an inaccuracy or deficiency. There is, And it's not clear why it has not been captured. So might be it put um, it 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 can be captured actually I don't understand why it has not been captured so at this stage castles but computer is not showing it an inaccuracy that is the thing that is confusing me uh, maybe okay no problem we'll uh, keep it study we are studying these games in order to improve our game and that is how we need to study now here when it is attacked you retreat with the idea to go for this castles so here computer is suggesting this move but this is also playable it is not an inaccuracy rook b8 now and in this way she has managed to control the center attacks goes back queen comes up attacking the knight double exchange and in this way since he was having double connected pawns in the center now all she had to do was look for an exchange and this this is very strong position that we should keep in mind if we are able to put it and in this way it has happened uh, round three and so today i think uh, fine us chess championship is coming that we will be covering and we are going to the So round three, round one we saw, round two we saw, round three. Now game has improved. She drew the first two matches. Third round she won. And
so this is the sixth match or she was able to drew it let us check how she drew it she is an e4 player actually i am a d4 player <laughs> and that's why it is becoming more difficult for me to analyze that but yes fine e4 e6 so this is french defense i usually play french defense when i am i see uh, any person playing this e4 i have tried to build my french defense from last uh, 25 years 20 years i have been trying to master this defense this opening and i love queen's gambit uh setup i um, queen's gambit decline king's indian nimzo indian anti nimzo indian slav defense trash yes i like trash also so right now we are going to witness that how the current champion lagno katrina faces french defense because he is playing with the white pieces and now we are trying to uh grab it uh, that how she is going to uh get that so if we see this uh match we are watching it from the broadcast of li at the liches.org we are also broadcasting it on liches now let us see d4 d5 so here there are two possibilities you can capture it or you can push it if you push it it is it is French defense advanced variation. If you capture it, it is French defense exchange variation. So uh, both are playable from Black's perspective. Also, Black always try to go for this because it gives it's a very strong counterplay. First, the game is around the queen side. You try to attack the pawn. This pawn is very critical from Black's perspective. You immediately go for this attack. If advanced variation is played in this game. Luckily, it's not the advanced variation. Uh, the champion, the women Grand Prix champion, goes for the exchange variation. So she has prepared it that way, and so it captures on e5 and it captures on e5. So this is called French defense exchange variation, and now it can be replied by white in many ways. The knight can come on. C3, the knight can come on. D2, the knight can come on. So all these variations are playable from white perspective, exchange variation, and now knight to f3. So bishop d6. So bishop belongs to d6. Alina, a very strong international master, federated 2504. So we are going to have uh, recently we see that these uh, women grandmasters and international masters they are playing very well and they have reached to the rating of 2500 and very soon they will be reaching 2600, 2700 and probably who knows that someday they may be uh, world champion we don't know. Now c4, knight f6 so c4 is attacking this pawn knight comes there defending this pawn you could have capture you can move ahead and here the opportunity has been given and so the bishop retreats so grandmaster lagno the current champion opts for this move let us see these seven moves because the openings are very important middle game is dependent on tactics e4 e6 d4 d5 e captures d5 e captures d5 knight f3 and now bishop d6 c4 so here you could have captured or you could have come for this move what computer is suggesting computer is suggesting to capture it so alina has not captured it if you capture it you are getting a point of plus 0.3 from the computer but here the immediate attack this is the idea that we can look for we may try in our games i am going to try this if i am playing with the white but actually i don't play e4 so it is very difficult for me but when i play against e4 i will go to take this because this move is a shocking and astonishing move because now once it has been played you have to retreat your bishop on e7 bishop goes back develops the bishop castles castles not grandmaster elena is playing quite well no inaccuracies yet captures captures 
attack on the bishop. So here there has been a doubling. So now you could uproot this and then try to attack the session bond but here uh, Lagno has gone for simplification defending the rook captures captures and now it seems that pawns, this is what French defense has the beauty that you have the center whenever you are playing uh, this idea then most of the times you end up having the center the French defense have this advantage so Alina is having the center but uh, Lagno is having the connected pawns. Rest two rooks against two rooks. However, these rooks are looking better at the center attack, holding this E and D file. So, bishop comes here. And now, exchange of the rooks, exchange of the bishop, and it seems that it will end up in a draw. These moves have been made, and no such tactical. So, there was a blunder here. This blunder could have been exploited. How? So computer suggests this move. You go back. You capture it. So this pawn was going and these two connected pawns would have entered in a entry. So this blunder that uh, has been done was in F4. It is a blunder and it is clearly here international master alina would have used it so we make blunders we are full of errors and that is how we learn chess we try to reduce we are not a good player all you need to do is everybody makes blunder even at the highest level there has been a blunder and it has not been capitalized so that is not good now queen d3 captures 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 check capture so it is difficult it seems that it is a draw and it happens in a draw that is how it has gone three pawns against two pawns should have been won but not that easy not that easy many moves have been played it is 72 moves the time is too much so we are at 78 moves and at this stage uh, three full repetition and it's a draw so we have done four uh, games today. Uh, first game she played Sicilian. Second game she first game she defended Sicilian against Vesali, Grandmaster Vesali, very strong. She drew it. Second game was against uh, she played Sicilian. Third game she played Rio Lopez and won. So we can say E4 Rio Lopez is a victorious one. Uh, you could have gone for advanced variation also you can choose either of the two now let us go to the fifth match let us see that what happens in the fifth match so round five we have four more rounds so Lagno Katrina is the winner of uh, FIDE Women Grand Prix and we are watching her games and right now round 4 and it is against Bibi Shara here. So D4, D5 and C4. So this is Queen's Gambit. Now the champion is defending the Queen's Gambit. She defends with the Queen's Gambit decline so and if you feel that uh, uh, it is worth uh, write this back and if you have not subscribed yet please subscribe we are a very small youtube channel trying to reach to a better position and your subscription your likes and your shares will help us to spread chess to more number of people so knight c3 c5 so what is this taras defense so Katrina Lagno went for Thras defense. First, she went for decline. Immediately, the best move for decline is this, but you can play this also. And if you play this immediately, this is called Thras defense. Now, uh, Bibishara went, so it is called. So now you have to develop the knight. Bishop goes to pin the knight. Bishop G, e6, d captures c5. Bishop captures c5, e3, castles. Uh, Bishop e2, h6 and then bishop h4 knight c6 
developing so is there any trick here so here it is getting tense development development pinning the night bis about and now the lagno has a very active piece of the bishop as well e3 castles bishop goes to e2 preparing for castle retreat here a question has been asked and you better retreat on this diagonal keeping the pin active so if you have a pin you need to win it by this pawn so you have to push this that is the idea she is not doing the 